Let's take a look at the appearance effects that you can apply to any shape in Autodesk Graphic. If you don't see the appearance panel, you can go over to the window drop down menu and click on appearance. This will show or hide the appearance panel. Let's pull in a shape from my shape library here. and apply some appearance effects to this. First I'll just size it to be a little bit bigger on the screen. Now with this shape selected, besides my fill, I have a lot of other things that I can change here. Let's give it a gradient fill to start with. So just by clicking on the swatch I can choose gradient. I'll just start with the basic one here and I can double click to edit the way my gradient behaves on the shape. To see more options for all of these appearance effects, click on these little hamburger menu to get the drop down editable features of each appearance effect. We're still tweaking the fill here, so I'm just going to change the colors of this gradient to something like this. Now we have effects like drop shadow, and again I can click on that little three line hamburger style menu to get lots of fine tuning control over the way that this drop shadow is applied to my shape. So I've got a little slider here for size. I can also double click and type in a specific value. So let's say I want that to be 15 points. We can also change the direction in which that drop shadow falls. So if I want it to go off to the right here, I can input the X value. Or if I want that to be directly centered and drop it down, I can increase the Y value. And again, I can double click or choose a point value from the drop down. I can minimize that effect and continue on looking at some of these other effects. We also have the ability to add an inner shadow. So this is a shadow that is applied on the inside of the shape, as you can see here. As soon as I check that little box, it will apply this effect. Then I can twirl down to see, again, the more granular controls over this inner shadow. We can also change the blending mode of that shadow. This is really, really powerful and really cool. So I could change that to, say, overlay, for example. It just changes the way that it interacts with the color and whatever other appearance attributes may be applied to this shape. If, for example, I wanted it to be hard light, you can see that it begins to change the way that it interacts with the colors on the shape itself. For now, I'm just going to make it normal. And again, I can adjust some of these parameters, say increase the size or decrease the size if I want something that's more just slightly inset. And I kind of like that. You can play with these as much as you want. The next one is outer glow. And for this, I'm going to change the background of my document here so we can see it being applied a little bit more easily. And I'm also going to turn off the drop shadow just by unchecking it. All of my edits that I've done on that are still there. It's just like toggling it on and off. So I'm going to take off the drop shadow and activate the outer glow. And you can see right away, now we have something that's glowing. If we click on the swatch color here, we can change the color of our glow to anything that we want. And we can also change to the color picker and adjust the alpha of that color. We also get control for the size of that glow, so we can make it big or we can make it small. Next on the list is inner glow, and for this I'm going to uncheck some of the other ones so that we can see this and how it affects our shape as well. Essentially it works the same as like an inner shadow, but this one does a glow. Also want to point out that the inner glow 
doesn't have any control over direction. It just glows from the edge itself. And we can adjust the size of that. Very handy, very useful, and very cool. The last one that we have is Blur. Blur is a very powerful appearance attribute. It's non-destructive, meaning all of my vectors are still intact, but it acts just like a Gaussian blur in like a pixel-based program. So you can see I can really crank this up and blur my image almost to be indistinguishable. This is really, really handy for making backgrounds and anything that you want to be subtle and soft, as well as creating soft shadows on other objects using shapes. Let me show you that here quickly. So I just create a square here on the canvas, and now I'm going to create a shape with the pen tool. And what I want to simulate is kind of a a contour shadow. So I'm just going to make my fill color black, and it's already somewhat semi-transparent. Under the appearance, all the way at the top, I have control over my blend mode and my opacity. I'm just going to take the opacity down a little bit. I'm also going to do one of the features inside of graphic and paste it inside this square, basically applying a clipping mask. So I'm just going to cut it to the clipboard, select my square, then from the edit menu, choose paste inside. Now with my shadow shape selected, I'll activate the blur in the appearance panel and start to crank it up. And you can see how this instantly softens it up and creates something very interesting and organic compared to just a linear gradient. You can click the little plus icon right down here and have multiple of all of these effects on a single shape. So for example, if I wanted to have another drop shadow and say maybe one that spreads out in one direction, maybe to the right here, I could also add a second drop shadow and adjust it to fall in a different direction. I could also change its color. And this works with all of the appearance effects in the appearance effects panel. So I could add multiple fills. For example, I could have a pattern fill and also a gradient fill and change its blending mode. I could have multiple strokes. I could have multiple drop shadows, inner shadows, outer glows, inner glows, and multiple blurs. Combining all of these appearance effects together can produce some really powerful and professional effects. And I encourage you to experiment with the appearance effects in Autodesk Graphic. Thanks for watching.